Well, The Cave is a new Danish documentary from Syrian Oscar nominee Ferris Fayad. It's a searing example of boots on the ground reporting as he follows a group of characters thrust into the unremitting savagery of the unfolding violence and recreates the physical experience of the Syrian civil war in a way few films about war ever have. An extraordinarily beautiful panoramic shot on the outskirts of Damascus begins his film as small black missiles shoot through the held frame and begin to explode after a long eerie silence. And as his camera slowly pulls down through a demolished building in a glorious shot full of dread, anxiety and foreboding, a graphic tells us how the escalating bombardment of Iskan El Ghouta, an area of small towns and fertile countryside east of Damascus, has transformed the streets into battlefields and somehow, after many have fled, 40,000 remain trapped. There is no way out, the graphic reads. As the camera reveals a subterranean network of tunnels that contain hospital operating theatres and wards for safety more than 30 metres underground, its nickname is The Cave. And when bombing attacks by the Syrian army and Russian jets are at their worst, patients are evacuated here, supervised by the hospital's manager, Amani Balur. A paediatrician and managing physician in her late 20s, the central figure of Fayad's film and the first woman in serious history to run a hospital and continually subject to patriarchal oppression and taunting sexism. Let's keep smiling for the sake of the children, she tells her colleagues during a bombing attack. That's the least we can do. In Fayyad's edit, he, well, he allows a no respite in the chaos and confusion, no, no life and no reprieve outside the carnage, even as she dreams of mascara and having beautiful teeth after the war. For Fayyad, she represents heroism in the heart of despair. I do not want to see another white man coming in and saving the day, he says. I wanted to show our heroes the way they are, unpolished. Day after day, she treats dozens of badly injured children. Balua's colleagues include the courteous, suave surgeon Salim, who plays classical concerts on his iPhone during operations. We have no anaesthetic, he says, but we have music. And there's a warm, funny nurse who cooks up vats of rice for staff, who imagine bowls filled with tomatoes, pizza and chocolate. The film's tagline, Hope Shines in the Darkest Places, could not be more ambiguous. There is no through-line story to be told here, no meaningful narrative that usually characterises immersive documentaries, just the story of an unfolding nightmare as the people Fayed films grapple with a seemingly unending tragedy. I did find it, you know, sort of like rather relentless and way too long. And I think because of that lack of narrative, uh, the film suffers. I believe Fayed did not film this in Damascus. He filmed it from a distance. He had three camera crews on the ground in Damascus and he's directing them from a distance. That's what I read. No, right? that's not what I read. I read that he had three cameramen and he directed them on the spot. I and read that, that, that he, he, was, cameramen. he didn't go, uh, he wasn't above the ground or below the ground in Damascus. That's well, what I read. And I actually think that that shows in the film. That makes sense to me because you never really get at her character. She is symbolic. She's uh, and not wildly interesting and it's just scenes of people being dragged in and chaos over and over and over again. And there's a limit to how... Rep how much you can take that repetition? Well, I saw it very differently. I was held by her character throughout and the other characters as well. I thought that was very well done. And I, and I, I thought the nurse was... She was, was lovely. She's very yeah, interesting. Uh, look, but, but I, there are, the, uh, the it's cameraman, too long. It's ought to have been no, at I least half the, an hour shorter. The right length, I think it uh, <laughs> captures its subject extremely impressively and extremely well. And I was totally and utterly engrossed throughout. Well, I thought she was absolutely fascinating to follow. Uh, and I, I think there is a structure to it. I think he, he's, in fact, he's been accused of being a bit Hollywood with the making of it, uh, in that he over embellishes and over burnishes the images, which I didn't mind in the slightest. I think they're very skillful cameramen and they do capture, you know, still moments as well. Uh, some of it's very photographic, uh, you know, to, to contrast with the chaos. I thought this was absolutely fantastic. Oh, well, uh, I'm glad you liked it more than me. Uh, because I think it's seriously flawed and I'd be very interested to know who was right, whether he was on the ground there or whether he did direct it from a distance. So we'll find out more, we'll research and... Well, I'm pretty sure I'm right, Margaret, on this well, one. So. I'm <laughs> I only know what I've read, Graham. <laughs> well, so I'm, I'm giving this four and a half. I'll give it 
three and a half. 